our role is important because we can mold the student's mind. I had an idea what cultural approach is, but I was curious to see what I can learn more about it. And when I arrived, this smile you see is the smile I received every day when we took those trips. The culture approach gives you a perspective on no matter what subject you teach, math, science, literature, take a look at it. What was going on at the time? What, are the, what were the religious influence? Economic and social, those ones always hit home. And as far as the status goes and intellectual, we all were always building something. We're looking for the, the next big ideal. Uh, so as you look at reading or you look at math, there was something else going on, just like in history, when these uh, pieces of literature were created. I, I, I especially love the role playing, uh, the critical thinking, because we don't get enough of that. I am my own master, sir. And I wish to advance on my own pace, sir. You gotta get out there more. Students don't wanna be confined to the book. It's, I, I mean, that's kinda going by the wayside now. It's antiquated, and, and the students, they don't want to be confined to that. They don't want to be confined to the desk and the book anymore. If you can find a way out to get out um, and let them experience it, that's so much better and it's so much more meaningful and they connect with it more if they can just touch it, feel it. You can almost empathize by being there. And that's something that I try to take back to my students because I've done a number of these seminars and institutes over the over the past 25 years and what I try to take back to my students is how I can relate my personal experience and make it personal to them. Um, a lot of my students uh, sometimes look for heroes and the Tuskegee Airmen are those heroes they can look up to. Uh, here are men of valor, honor, discipline, uh, men that you can, men and women I should say, uh, that you can look up to and see a role model that you can follow. Um, here these uh, men went off uh, to fight in a war in the defense of this great nation of ours and they, uh, they come back to the same poverty and the same issues of civil rights that they left. Um, even though many folks didn't believe that they could fly an airplane to start with, uh, much less fight and win a, help win a war, uh, but they persevered and, uh, and I proved everybody wrong. What I'd like to be involved in doing is trying to find out, trying to help somebody uncover what it is they could be good at and then trying to encourage them along that way. So I think, I think it's a, the Tuskegee Airmen is a great example of these guys discovering that they could do this really terrific thing. There is hope in that. There is, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a glory in that. A lot of our kids that we have in the classroom will probably never leave the county, much less the state. And a lot of them have only seen history in history books. But when you can stand on a piece of land and evaluate it like a commanding officer did, or stand behind the, uh, an air, aircraft and take a good look at it just before you jump in like a pilot did, it gives you that sense of belonging, that sense of connection. And once you make that connection, you build on it from there. Create that spark, which will turn into a flight. The idea of just being there at a historical, national historical site, to be present, to be on the land, to be in the building what, where history took place. It just made me feel like I was part of history. I have taught Andersonville before. I did it in my student teaching to eighth graders. And uh, I never realized how many people were dead until you stand there in front of the cemetery and look at 13,000 graves. Those people's experiences is what builds history. That's what builds the cultural approach to history because it puts us in their shoes. These are things you're not gonna find in a book. These are things that aren't gonna to be told. This is what's passed down from generation to generation. One of the funny stories we have here is Andrew Carnegie was staying upstairs and throughout the night and into the morning, his daughter was playing the piano. At that time, he was only giving 10000 
something something happened overnight and he increased his givings that following morning. So the, a lot of people <laughs> rumored to say it was because of the piano playing. You know, everybody can make their own guess, but she was a well, well, well known pianist. It humanizes it, and that's what we as teachers need to do to our students, because when we humanize history, that's when they'll learn. That's when they'll have a desire to pick it up and run with it. So many times when you are lecturing to the kids about whatever, they are just like, oh my God, I gotta listen to this again. But if you can put them in the shoes of, let's say, FDR, when he has to make a decision that affects the human course of events, that's when they, wow, this is, this is the moment. Uh, it's the goosebump moment. FDR's Little White House. Um, I've been there numerous times, and every time it's still a goosebump moment. Um, this is where FDR died on April 12th, 1945, and for some people, the world came to a screeching halt. Uh, it was a life-changing moment for many people, uh, and to walk in that room where that actually happened, and then go into the bedroom where they laid him out, um, and to know that only hours later, Mrs. Roosevelt arrived, and she goes in, and in some instances, the, the bottom dropped out of her world once again. When I read the expectations before coming into this program, because I wanted to make sure I was making the right choice, it said to, to reach, to, to build, to make history real. Cultural approach does that. I want to focus on Plains, Georgia. I can relate to Plains, Georgia, but I didn't think it would emotionally At this time in Iran bring me there and make me have that connection. But I had it. Innocent victims of terrorism and anarchy. Also at this moment. And the reason I had that connection was because Jimmy Carter, a 39th president, growing up, I would say country boy. takes and cuts the lawn. That's amazing. And you just mentioned cultural approach. Religion, social, economic, all in one day. That's awesome. Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, that was just a, a big thing. When you go in there and you, you walk in through the basement and you look over to your left and you see Martin Luther King's um, office and walk into his office and see you know where he sat to write draft his um, speeches and draft the beginning of a movement but the beginning of a movement um, so that was huge for me to see that how long not long yes, because no lie. the real magnitude of it comes when you actually go to the state capitol and you can see the star where Jefferson Davis stood when he was inaugurated and then walk a few blocks down the road and see the church and you can see these two opposing, I guess, ideologies right there. I mean, it, the symbolism of it. Um, so that, all of that for me was that goosebump moment. Come to the Ivy Center and, and experience it. Take, take a, a seminar and find out the why of history because it is, it is absolutely fascinating. If you have the opportunity to come to one of these seminars and, and get out and see it firsthand for yourself, absolutely take the opportunity because this has been a fantastic um, experience for me. Thanks for riding that train. Sign up for the seminars, come out and visit, get a hold of uh, Dr. Salazar, get a hold of someone in the, the cultural uh, approach of the Ivy Center, and you'll be glad you did.